हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल ज्ञान संपदा इन अवर प्रीवियस क्लासेस वी डेल्ट अबाउट द प्रॉपर्टीज हिस्ट्री एंड क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ फेराइट्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ क्रिस्टल स्ट्रक्चर एंड टुडे अगेन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द टाइप ऑफ फेराइट्स और अगेन द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ फेराइट्स इट सेल्फ वेर वी विल बी कवरिंग the classification based on the coercivity understanding its features making use of some examples and finally we will understand about the applications of these types of ferrets so let's start our today's class and try to understand about another kind of classification so today we will study about the classification of ferrets based on the amount of coercivity so based on this parameter mainly we can divide the ferrites into three classes or three types so before going to that we need to know what actually is coercivity and we say that coercivity is a measure of a magnetic material which explains about the ability of that material to resist an external magnetic field without losing its internal property that is magnetism but we need to know how we can measure this coercivity already we have discussed while discussing hysteresis loop but still let's see so to measure coercivity we can just apply the external magnetic field due to which the magnetization is going to increase as you can see here for the material magnetic field is applied due to which the magnetization increases and then saturates then if we decrease the amount of magnetic force or magnetic field applied then the flux density or magnetization decreases along this path ab and we can observe there exist some extra amount of magnetization within the material which we call as remanence and to remove this magnetization we reverse the direction of magnetic field and at certain magnetic field the magnetization is going to become zero and that is the point which explains about coercivity so by measuring the external magnetic field required to reduce the magnetization of the magnetic material to zero is nothing but coercivity so in detail we have studied while studying the properties of ferromagnets which go similar with the ferrites and finally it is going to trace the hysteresis loop so after understanding about coercivity let us move on to the three types of classes based on this parameter of coercivity and we know that coercivity and retentivity or remanence are most important parameters when we need to study about the applications of ferrets and based on coercivity the first class is hard ferrets hard ferrets means they have a high coercivity and high remanence after magnetization so the value of coercive field and remanence magnetization both are more then the second type is semi hard ferrites and third type is soft ferrite so soft ferrite have a lower coercivity and for semi hard ferrites we can say that coercivity lies intermediate of hard ferrite and soft ferrite and now let us understand one by one so first one is hard ferrite as we have seen these have high coercivity and high remanence or retentivity after magnetization so these are difficult to demagnetize easily they cannot be demagnetized means the magnetization cannot be brought back to zero very easily and this is the reason they are used to make permanent magnets and the feature is they are very resistant to become demagnetized as we can tell based on the coercivity and they have high magnetic permeability so magnetic field lines are permitted 
when we are dealing with hard ferrites. And generally, for composing the permanent magnets or hard ferrite magnets, we make use of iron oxide and barium or strontium carbonate. So this is a general thing. And if you want to understand about some of the examples, most common type of hard ferrites are strontium ferrite, then strontium hexaferrite and finally barium ferrite. Their chemical formula as you can see here and also you can try to understand these things based on the previous classification. So M is strontium Fe12 O19 and if we compare this chemical formula with respect to the previous type of classification which we made based on the crystal structure then MFE12 O19 can be referred as the hexagonal ferrite itself and we knew that hexagonal ferrites are also called as hard ferrites and the details about hard ferrites we have seen today and if we go for barium ferrite then it is a highly magnetic material which has a high packing density and clearly we can say it is a metal oxide and it is found to have wide range of applications in magnetic card strips, speakers and magnetic tapes. So that is the application part and this mainly helps in long term data storage because the material is magnetic and resistant to temperature change as well as corrosion and oxidation. So that is a area of success. So these are some of the broad details about hard ferrites. And now let us move on to the next type that is semi hard ferrite. So based on the name itself we can understand it is not soft nor hard. So it lies intermediate of both the things and the parameter is coercivity. So it is not so easy to demagnetize as in the case of soft ferrite nor it is so difficult to demagnetize as in the case of hard ferrite and they have high saturation magnetostriction and this is of prime importance. Their magnetostrictive properties can be tuned or adjusted by inducing a magnetic uniaxial anisotropy and mainly we can say this property of magnetostriction is helpful in applications like sensors and actuators and most common example for semi hard ferrite is cobalt ferrite in which the induced magnetic anisotropy is also beneficial to enhance the magnetoelectric effect in the composite. So cobalt ferrite structure you can observe here again compare the general formula M Fe2 O4 which we can clearly say it is exhibiting spinel structure. So cobalt ferrite is an example for semi hard ferrite as well as spinel structure or spinel ferrite and these are some details about semi hard ferrite and next let us move on to the third type of ferrite which is a soft ferrite. So based on the name we can say that it is having a low coercivity so they can be easily demagnetized or they easily change their magnetization and act as magnetic field conductors. So based on this we can say that soft ferrite materials magnetization can easily reverse the direction without dissipating much energy. So in lesser amount of energy or magnetic field or force we can just change the direction or demagnetize the material. Based on which we can see the material which is having the high resistivity is going to prevent the eddy currents in the core which is the another source of energy loss. So that is also prevented and these have comparatively lower losses at high frequencies 
due to which they are extensively used in the course of RF transformers and also inductors. In transformers, they are used to change the voltage from primary to secondary windings. And due to this only, the soft ferrites are also called as transformer ferrites. And clearly we can say these are not permanent magnets because these can be easily demagnetized. And moving to the application part, mainly they are used in switched mode, power supplies and loop stick antennas used in AM radios. AM is amplitude modulation radios and FM is frequency modulation. So in the picture you can easily observe the loop stick antenna used in AM radios and these are also having applications in electronic industries to make efficient magnetic cores or ferrite cores for high frequency inductors, transformers as we have already seen and various microwave components. And some of the examples are manganese, zinc ferrite, nickel, zinc ferrite, etc. So these are some of the details about soft ferrites. And finally, let us club all the applications because ferrite compounds are extremely of low cost as they are made mostly with iron oxide and also have excellent corrosion resistance. So they don't get easily corroded which makes its life longer. Some of the common applications are refrigerator magnets and these magnets look something like this. Then loudspeakers clearly in this picture we can observe how the ferrite magnets are arranged within the loudspeaker and how it is going to work. So this is the magnet and this is how the speaker is going to work. Then some of the small electric motors which we can see here outside there is a magnet and we can see for hard ferrites or hexaferrites the most common uses are in refrigerators, loudspeakers and small motors for cordless appliances and also in automobile applications. And some other are microwave devices, recording media, then magneto-optic media as well as in telecommunication and electronic industries. So clearly we can observe that the application of ferrites is having a wide range and efficiency is also more because of its properties of anti-corrosion and its durability also its low cost. Here we have just collected some of the applications there are wide range of applications even earlier computer memories were storing data using hard ferrite cores and nowadays magnetic recording tapes are also using ferrite powders. So based on the properties of different types of ferrites, whether it is a hard, soft or semi-hard ferrite, as per the applications or requirements, these can be made use of. And these are some of the details about classes of ferrites based on coercivity. And this is it about today's class. And in our next class, we will be dealing with the Curie temperature and susceptibility in case of ferry magnets. So till then, stay tuned, study well and thank you for watching.